Welcome back to the Express in Vancouver at the YWCA pool. Now, here's a question for you. How would you decorate for your rockin' pool party? Maybe you'd go with some palm trees, fruity drinks with umbrellas in them, or maybe hula skirts and some Don Ho cutouts? They say that decor is the ultimate way to set the mood, especially so for what could be the biggest party of your life, your wedding. Hi, I'm Aubrey. And I'm Sarah. And we are the Wedding Bells. I just got engaged. And I did not. We're on an adventure to plan the big day. Everyone knows that pink is my favorite color. My ring is pink. I like everything pink. I definitely am having like pink because my ring is pink. Let's face it, her whole wedding can't be pink. So we headed to see Jeanette, owner of De Lovely Creative, to get some decorating ideas. And her specialty? Homemade, handmade, easy, cheap and easy details that you can all do yourselves. I like those little details because it makes me so much more part of my own wedding. The first thing I loved? You just get a chalkboard paint, you can paint it on the glass, you can use it as dual purpose, so it can be decorative for the table, obviously to use as a glass, and also in place of favor cards. Jeanette had used a black and yellow thing, and we decided to name it. It's the Contessa, we've named it. All right, we're moving on to look number two. There's a poof! I love there's a pom-pom. And then Jeanette explained. Most banquet halls, restaurants, you get your standard white tablecloth. Okay. That usually comes with the price of everything. Yep. So instead of just, first of all, going straight to doing a runner, yep. to add in that color, ribbon, you can get yards of it for really inexpensive. And then. I came up with an idea. Some of your guests or your grandparents oh, yes. put old wedding photos up. They're like, oh, that's my wedding. Or, you know, or your grandparents, like my grandparents are, are gone. So I'd love to have them like, Oh, now I'm getting all emotional. This is so silly. <laughs> While Sarah got all emotional thinking about her grandparents, we named the look Alice's Wonderland. Look number three, which I think is very much a Midsummer Night's Dream. Instead of doing the typical table runner idea made out of fabric, yeah. this is just reindeer moss. So it just adds bringing the outdoors. You can in. get this in any oh, yeah, forest. The, like the chandelier yeah, is just yeah. dripping with this beautiful. Woo. Oh, I'm such a klutz. I wrecked the masterpiece. We didn't break anything. We're, ah. Oops, maybe I did. Sarah's not decorating her own wedding. It's okay, Sarah, let's just name it. What if it's Puck's dream? Puck makes me think of hockey. <laughs> na, 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 na. Okay, Aubrey. We settled on naming it a Midsummer Night's Dream. And then it was time for a porch style poof making contest. We're gonna try and make pom poms and it's for quality, not speed. Fan it out a bit more to give it that round shape. Okay. And you're good. Mine is shaped like a football. It's like flat it's on one side. It looks like it's got, it's got bed head. Can I just pay you to make these for me? Absolutely. <laughs> Done. It was pretty obvious that Aubrey was the winner. I'm actually starting to feel bad about winning. I won in the love game. Just kidding. <laughs> that hurt. I love this. This is how I imagine growing old with Jody. And you. That's right, Sarah. And you and Jody are stuck with me. We'll get you a room in our house with a swing. Well, get me a husband. The afternoon had been a success. It's magical, and I love it. I can't wait to get married! While I started dreaming about decorating my wedding, we enjoyed the rest of our day in the country, even stopping to smell the roses. For Shaw TV, we're the wedding bells. The big trend right now for weddings is to have a theme, like a masquerade ball, Star Wars, even Halloween. Anything that reflects the bride and the groom is up for grabs. Now, a big theme for 2011 here at the YWCA is the bucket list. And On Mine is running a half marathon in Iceland this August with Team Diabetes. Now, I'm not really sure what to expect, but our next guest sure does, because he did it last August. Sarvis is still running, months after he completed a half marathon in Iceland with Team Diabetes. There we go, 245. This is home video he took from the finish line. The anticipation would build and I sort of pick up a little bit more momentum and, and speed up a little more and gradually everybody kept cheering on more and more as he reached the finish and it was just an amazing experience. Bruce has a special reason for running. He was diagnosed with diabetes four years ago, around the same time his daughter was born. I take insulin uh, every day, every time I eat, I have to take it. Every hour I get a little bit, I have an insulin pump that's constantly feeding me a supply. It was just a learning experience for both of us, and it was a great time 
to happen because of all the change at once. Maybe we need to pick up Oh no! Our kids, two and four, Michaela and Bruce Jr. They're great. They're uh, sort of my inspiration for doing everything. And his kids have reason to be proud of their dad. Bruce raised over $6,000 for Team Diabetes. He likes to do a lot of fundraising for different things. So when he told me that he was going to do the diabetes run, and he said he had to raise $6,100, and I was like, what? You have to raise how much? I'm like, are, are you sure we can do this? I'm coming up in the last 200 meters. I decided to take a proactive approach. I'm going to do some fundraising. I'm going to make this happen. I didn't honestly expect that I'd be able to do it. I was surprised, even with myself, that I could finish it off. Bruce says being a dad and living with diabetes has inspired him to set a good example for his kids and raise awareness for the disease. Myself living with diabetes, my children are pretty aware of it. and They know what my insulin pump is, they know about my testers and, and the tubing and all the supplies that I use. Uh, but what I want to instill in them is a sense of sort of social responsibility, being able to go out into the world and working to make a difference for other people, not only themselves. Definitely an inspiration to me and uh, so, yeah. And yeah, yeah, it's definitely an inspiration to the kids. Oh yes, they're very proud of their daddy. <laughs> I'm Bianca Salterbeck in Coquitlam for The Express. Go Daddy! As mentioned, I'm training to run the half marathon in Reykjavik this August 2011. And if you go to teamdiabetes.ca, you can sign up and join me. You can also donate to the cause. And you can follow my online training on YouTube. Now you're watching The Express, and we're going to talk healthy hobbies coming up. Up next on The Express. Simply replacing some moldings, changing doors. Home Renos 101. Uh, the average homeowner can do, and it'll improve the look of your house dramatically. <laughs> Cross country skiing. Ahead of your body instead of behind. The Express. This is your local voice. Welcome back to the Express at the YWCA in Vancouver. Now this facility underwent some renos last year to make the change rooms bigger and better. But how about you? Are you up for a little Mike Holmes action? According to a local handyman, there are a few simple things that you can do to make your house feel brand new. This could be the year you decide your house needs a fresh look. CC Woodcraft's Connor Spearin has tips for anyone who wants the feel of a brand new home without knocking down a wall. Just simply replacing some moldings, changing doors, hardware, small things like that the average homeowner can do and it'll improve the look of your house dramatically. This Richmond resident is used to coming up with projects on the spot. You might recognize him from HGTV's Handyman Superstar Challenge. Bunk beds. He says anyone can do these projects. The first one is moldings. Typically, when houses are built, unless you have a custom house, a spec house is usually used with sort of low-end, plain moldings. It's an easy way to make your house look a little either newer or change the air of your house. It's something the average homeowner could easily do in a weekend. He could change the moldings in a room in a day, no problem. One way to dramatically change a room is to update pocket doors. The main thing when you're replacing a pocket door is removing the old door and getting it out of the frame. So you have to remove all your stops, remove your moldings to get the door out. Once the door is out, you swap the hardware over to your new door and slide it back in the same way the old one came out. Another technique he suggests is called wainscoting. Wainscoting is basically panels along your wall and it just makes, gives it an older look and a more richer feel to the house. You can just do it in with a panel mold and make it look like the illusion of wainscoting, which is a simple way a homeowner can do it. The end result after a hard day's work is this. With a coat of paint for the wainscoting and new outlet covers, the renovation is complete. Connor's best advice? Obviously, if your tools are sharp, they work much better. And basically just being safe with them, knowing how to use your tools properly and just being safe. The best thing nowadays is just to go online. Everyone has websites. You can go on to design websites. You just find something you like and just go ahead and tackle it. In Richmond, I'm Melanie Panetta for The Express.
Recent stats say that Canadians love home renos. 66% of homeowners did some kind of home renovation in the last two years. And hey, us Canucks also love our winter sports. And today's road trip segment is taking us cross-country skiing in Prince George. Travel along with us on the Quality Assured Collision Road Trip as we explore the many marvelous attractions and activities of beautiful British Columbia. Today's Quality Assured Road Trip takes us just outside of Prince George to the Caledonia Nordic Cross Country Ski Club. Hi, I'm Christina Dahl. The club has been a training ground for hundreds of people over the years, including Prince George's very own Olympic biathlete, Megan Tandy. It was a great starting point for her, and it's also my starting point. First up, I need some gear. Whether you're new to the sport or a seasoned expert, the club offers all the rentals you'll need for a fantastic day of skiing. I'm a beginner. What will I need? Well, you'll need a classic set. So tell me a bit about the club. Who do you see come out here? Well, we see all sorts of uh, different ages out here. We see very young uh, families all the way up to uh, seniors, both recreational skiers and competitive skiers. Our volunteers are extremely important to this club, particularly our coaches. We have coaches for the Jackrabbit programs, our junior races. Our executive is our volunteer run, all our social events are volunteer run, and particularly our races are all run by volunteers, and we're always looking for more. Whoa, looks like I'm a little uncoordinated. Hi there, how are you today? I'm good. Good, I'm Carol, and I'm with the Caledonian Nordic Ski Club, and I'm the ski school coordinator here. Looks like you could maybe do with a bit of a lesson. Yes, I could. What do you offer? Well, we offer beginner lessons up to advanced. We offer private lessons, semi-private. We also offer group lessons and clinics, so basically whatever you're interested in. Can we get started now? Well, I think we probably could. I could probably give you a couple of tips to get started anyway. Are you interested? I am. All right, let's go. Because eventually you'll get it quite low, like this kind of thing. But just starting off, just so you feel like your weight's more centered or ahead of your body instead of behind. All right, well, you're looking a lot more confident. I do feel a lot better about it thanks to your lesson. I think I'm going to go hit the trails for some practice. All right, have fun. We have about 45, 50 kilometers of trails all together. Uh, probably about 20 of those are uh, difficult or black diamond trails. The rest are intermediate or beginner trails. We have a two and a half kilometer dog trail, which is extremely popular. <laughs> the lights come on for night skiing at 4.30 and they go off at 9.30, so there's five hours. This year we offer snowshoe trail map and rentals for people to go out and, and try that too. If they're not comfortable on skis, they can always try snowshoeing. It's just as another avenue to get out here and enjoy the outdoors. I've had so much fun cross-country skiing today, but now it's time to warm up by the clubhouse fireplace. The short drive is definitely worth the trip, so make sure to visit before the winter passes you by. For Quality Assured Road Trip, I'm Christina Dahl. Entertaining and informative, the Quality Assured Collision Road Trip. Weekends on Shaw TV. Always something new and exciting. For more winter family fun ideas, you can visit CaledoniaNordic.com. And for some ideas for that New Year's resolution on your diet, we've got the Express Spotlight. Dine Out Vancouver is a citywide celebration of food and BC wine. Over 200 restaurants give you the chance to get a taste from the hottest restaurants and neighborhood favorites for a fixed price. Vancouver Farmers Markets is about people who love fresh food to create healthy food networks that sustain our land, our community and our homes. Let a chef guide you through Granville Island's seasonal ambience while you sample food from local artisans and farmers. This Inside Peak tour wraps up tableside with a three-course lunch at Bistro 101. And don't forget your fitness resolutions. Here at the YWCA in Vancouver, they have a 25-meter ozonated pool where they offer aquafit classes, master swims, and general swims. And they have a new feature program just for this month where you can try Zumba aquafit. You know, a little dancing in the water. Now, I'm Johanna Ward, and on behalf of all of us on the Express, thanks so much for watching. We hope you join us next time.